Welcome back everyone. Dale here, in case you can't recognize me. Here, have a look, Dale. I'm wearing my mask to make sure that everyone around me is safe. I hope you've enjoyed your break and please don't fiddle with your masks. That's a no-no. We're here for episode number 17 and I have a bowl of more of my favorite fruit, passion fruit. They're off my vine and silly vine, it doesn't know it's winter time. It's time now for us to get into stamina. And so I need to move this mask somewhere where it will stay out of the way. Mm, that doesn't look too good. I'm gonna put it down here. And first of all, we're gonna go with high knees. So one, two, three, four. Can you do 10 of those in a row? And then moving on to running on the spot, 10 jogs. One, two, three, four, five. Keep it up for 10 times. Then back to the high knees again. One, two, three, four, five. 10 times and then back to running on the spot. One, two, three, four, five. 10 steps. How many times can you cycle through that in 60 seconds? We're gonna find out in five, four, three, two, one, go. How'd you go? I did 11 million cycles. You believe me, don't you? Okay, now it's time to get ready. Get your journal, get your mandarin, get your toothpicks, and let's hear what Marie has to say. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back. It's great to see you again. I hope you enjoyed what we had in the last couple of weeks, but we're back today and we've got something new for you. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen. My kitchen is a place I spend a lot of time. I like to cook and I love to eat. And because I love to eat, I love to cook. And I cook what I like to eat. And I like to cook what Dale likes to eat because, you know, frankly, he likes to eat things like liver and he likes to eat things like kidneys and he likes to eat things like tripe, which is the stomach of animals. And you know, that, no, that doesn't go. I don't cook those things. I cook what I like to eat. And today, I've got a recipe that I know you can do at home and I would love to see you do it. If you actually create this recipe that I'm going to do, take a picture of it and send it to me at marie at unihillchurch.com.au or put it on our Facebook group page, then I will be sending out prizes to you, but you've got to be in it to win it. So you've got to cook the cake and show evidence that you've done it. Before we start though, I've got a question for you. What's something you don't like waiting for? I think I've told you before, I don't like waiting in queues. If I have to line up anywhere, I will weigh up the cost of the wait time. And if I decide that waiting in this line is going to take me too long for the joy of the thing that I'm going there for, I will leave, I will not queue up. Particularly at shops, you know, with our ISO uh, COVID time at the moment, you have to keep your 1.5 distance away from people and that means queues can go out the door from a shop and around the corner. Well, I will leave, I'll go somewhere else, I'll come back at a different time, but I don't like queuing up. I'm not patient that way. 
And that's what we're going to learn about today, what patience is all about. But before we do, I'm going to cook this cake. It's an orange cake, orange and poppy seed. And it's simple as, guys, all that you need is a food processor. And if you don't have one of those, what you can simply do is beat it and put it together that way. So I'm gonna start. The first thing you need to do is just simply throw one orange, the whole piece, have a look. The rind is on it, the peel is on it, I mean, the pips are still in it. You don't have to do anything except chop it up and put it into your food processor. Food processor. That's the very first thing. Just throw it in there, very simple. Get that done, juice and all. Put it in. Now, make sure you ask your parents before you start anything. Here we go. Clean it all up. blended enough, I will blend it and I'll come back in a second. Now, I've got it all done. Here we are. It's all mushy, okay, really mushy. And all I have to do now is add. And you'll have the ingredients, the list of ingredients, because it has to be the right amounts, otherwise it won't work, in there. It's a cup of caster sugar. I'm simply going to put the caster sugar in there and then three eggs. Don't have to beat them because this will do the whole trick. This is because I'm not very patient too when it comes to cooking. I like things to be done very quickly. So my sugar and my eggs go in. Mix them up a little bit. Nicely done. It becomes nice and creamy. Then I'm going to add 185 grams of melted butter. I put the melted butter in a, a glass jar and threw that into the microwave so it was really easy to melt, but cover it, otherwise it splatters everywhere. Here we go, blend it up. How simple is this? And then, I'm going to open it up because this can be a bit messy, one and a half cups of self-raising flour. Put that in very, very carefully so it doesn't go all over your bench and mum and dad won't let you ever cook again. Here we go, got that in there. And lid back on again. Oh, process it. Oops. Here we go, mix it all up. This is the easiest cake to make, isn't it? You don't have to do a whole lot of different processes and a whole lot of pots and pans. All done in one food processor. And then the final thing you need, I said it was an orange and poppy seed cake. These are poppy seeds, they're black. Now you don't have to add these if you don't want to. I like them because it adds a little bit more flavor to it. Just two tablespoons, there's one in there. And then the second one, here we go. As I said, you don't need them. And these ones don't have to be blitzed very much. It's just to mix it through. Here we go. Nearly there, put the lid back on again. Nice and tight. Put it on. Wait until I see it go through the mixture. And done. Very simply done. Now, all I need to do is pour it into a pan, stick it in the oven for 40 minutes and or 40, 45 minutes, check that it's cooked and bring it out and then you can ice it and do it beautifully. I just need to get a pan that has paper at the bottom and I greased it at the sides. Get your parents to teach you how to do that. Pour your cake mixture in. And this is where the patience comes in now, guys. What you have to do is patiently wait for 40 to 45 minutes. Oh dear, I think I've got a pan that's a bit too small for the amount of batter that I have. And it might end up over once it rises, because it's self-raising flour, once this cake rises, it might rise out of the pan, because I've got it very high there. So I'm gonna put that inside another pan. Hopefully, by the end of today, this is cooked, but I have to be very patient. I'm going to put it in the oven now, and we're going to hear about what you've got to know today. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? 
Hey there kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about the next fruit of the spirit, patience. So anytime today, you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will walk in patience. Being patient ain't easy. We all get in a hurry, and nobody likes to wait. Yo, what's taking so long? I've been waiting forever. I'm about to turn into an old man. I don't got time for this. What are you doing? Come on. Come. Ah! When we don't have patience, it makes us say things and do things that hurt other people's feelings. Man, you are slower than a one-legged gerbil. Hold up. That's not how someone with the fruit of the spirit acts like. We got to be patient with God and others. So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you got to know, you tell them. I will walk in patience. And that right there is what you got to know. This is Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you got to know. Hey, kids, what time is it? It's time for our game. And do you have your toothpicks ready? And do you have your mandarin ready? What you have to do is peel it with one hand. Watch what I'm doing. Peeling with one hand. And then, having peeled it, you need to separate all of the pieces with one hand, like this. Separating out all of the pieces. Once you've got all the pieces separated, then we get to the difficult part, and boy, this is difficult already. You need to use toothpicks to put each piece on top of another piece until they are all stacked up. So look, there's two on top of each other. Before it falls, I'm gonna put an, oops, I'm gonna put another one down. You see how I'm alternating? thin side and then thick side. I think that's a winning strategy, but we won't know until I succeed. I'm squashing them down a bit with the toothpicks to help them stay. Now another one, here we go. Maybe I should have done all the big ones first and then the little ones later. Oh, too late now, I've started. Now this one, uh oh, starting to lean a bit to the right. So I'm going to put this one a bit further to the left. Okay, guys, do you think you'll be able to finish? Because I don't think I can finish it. Ah, no! Have a go. In five, four, three, two, one, go! Well, were you able to do it? Were you able to do it in 60 seconds? Were you able to do it at all? How many times did you have to repeat it before you got it to work? Did you even get it to work? I know it took a lot of patience. 
and I didn't have enough patience, so I cheated. Uh oh, I hope you guys didn't cheat, but today we're learning about patience. So keep watching and you will learn about patience too. Being patient is certainly not an easy thing, particularly for people like me. But did you realize that patience is a fruit of the spirit? Let's get ready to learn all about ch patience by checking out this video now. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are you excited for tomorrow, Kyle? Yeah, Dad. Tomorrow is Christmas, and I can't wait. Well, you've got to wait till tomorrow morning to check on the presents, okay, champ? No, no, no. I want to open presents now. Now, son, we talked about this. You have to wait till at least 7 a.m. <clears throat> but, Dad, that's so late. That's practically New Year's. You can make it. Now close your eyes and go to sleep. <sighs> Now remember, no earlier than 7 a.m., okay? Good night. 7 a.m., sheesh. Might as well have said, wait until I'm 100. It's okay, I can do this. I just have to get to 7 a.m. Wait, what time is it now? 12 hours? I gotta wait 12 hours before I can open presents? 12 hours? I'll probably starve to death by then. No, calm down. You're 17 years old. You can do this. Just close your eyes super tight. Fall asleep and boom, it'll be morning. This is easy. See, you're already getting tired. You're probably halfway there already. Let's look at the clock. Only one minute? Ugh. This is impossible. Look, here's the deal. You tried, and it's just not going to happen. Just go downstairs and take a peek. There's no harm in that. Seriously? My floor has never made this kind of noise before. Hmm, I gotta be quiet. Those will work. Thanks for the slippers, Aunt Peg. Remember, just a peek. Look at all of this loot. Okay, you had your peek, now go to bed. I mean, we're already down here. Okay. Just one little gift, the smallest one. Ah, this one, so small. Obviously we're not opening it, but no harm in a little shake. After all, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Whoops. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wow, he was super impatient, huh? He ended up paying a high price for his impatience though. It's that way with all of us. If we choose to get in a hurry and not wait on God, things can really turn out badly. Let's have a look at where we are getting our lesson from today in the Bible. It's from Genesis chapter 40, verse 23 through to the verse 41 and verse 46. So write that down, guys. And today's story is about a man named Joseph. When he was young, Joseph had a dream from God that one day he would be a ruler over many people. But things didn't really go the way Joseph thought they would. First, Joseph was sold into slavery by his own family. His own brothers sold him. And then he went from being a slave to actually being a prisoner in jail for a crime he did not commit. Things were starting to look up for him though. One day, Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh's cupbearer. 
the cupbearer promised to mention Joseph to Pharaoh when he saw him. Well, sadly, the cupbearer forgot to do that. He forgot to talk about Joseph. <clears throat> so Joseph ended up waiting in prison for two whole years. That's a long time. That's 24 months. That's 730 days. That's 17,520 hours that he had to wait. That must have been tough for him. But even though the cupbearer had forgotten about him, God had not forgotten about him. Joseph didn't know it, but the whole time he was waiting, God was working behind the scenes to make some amazing things happen. One night, Pharaoh had a dream and he couldn't figure out what the dream meant. Well, Pharaoh got all of his smartest advisors together and asked them, can anyone tell me what my dream means? None of them could figure out what the dream meant. And suddenly the cupbearer in Pharaoh's court finally remembered Joseph. He told Pharaoh that Joseph could interpret dreams. So Pharaoh called for Joseph to be brought from prison to interpret the dream. Joseph heard the dream and told Pharaoh what it meant. Joseph said, there will be seven years of blessing, then there will be a great famine. If you save food before the famine, Egypt will be safe from the famine. Pharaoh was amazed. Pharaoh decided to put Joseph in charge of collecting the food during the years of blessing and distributing it during the famine years. He said, no one is as wise as you, Joseph. I will put you as a second in command in Egypt. Only I will have more power than you. Isn't that amazing? God came through for Joseph in a big way. It may have been extremely hard for Joseph to wait on God for so long, but God came through. God is amazing, and you're going to learn how important it is to wait on God. Boys and girls, it's me, Terry, Teriyaki, and I was just cooking up a special power verse, but like you know, I think I got it a little scrambled up again. I, I need your help. Let's look at it together. Be brave for the Lord, 2714. Wait patiently and courageous. Yes, Psalm, wait patiently for the Lord. Um, yes, this is not right. Not right at all. Very, very mixed up. Kind of like that time I mixed up the lettuce bowl with my bowl of decorative fall leaves and the customers just kept asking for more and more dressing. Oh, what a mix up. I think I'm gonna need your help getting this one unscrambled. Let's look at it again. Hmm. Be brave for the Lord. Wait, that's not right. We don't need to be brave for the Lord. Let's move brave over for now. Something, something for the Lord, 2714. Well, that goes to the end, obviously. Wait patiently and courageous. Hmm, that doesn't seem right either. Let's keep going through. Yes, Psalm. Whoops, that's the scripture reference. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Ooh. That sentence makes sense. Maybe it's supposed to be repeating the first sentence. Let's try moving this extra wait patiently to the beginning. Let's try now. Wait patiently for the Lord. Yep. Something, something and courageous. Oh, be brave and courageous. Yes. Wait patiently for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Ah, yes, that's it. Let's try saying it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. 
Psalm 2714. That's a great power verse. It's all about God's patience. The customers at Nice Rice really need to hear this power verse. They're always saying things like, hurry up with my dumplings, or where's my soup, or why am I having to wait two hours for my salad? They're just in a rush. Don't they know it takes time to perfect a good recipe? Especially when you're getting all the ingredients scrambled and having to recook stuff? Well, this power verse is all about waiting on God, being slow to get angry, and trusting Him. And when we do that, we can grow patience, another fruit of the Spirit. Let's try saying that power verse one more time all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. Great job, boys and girls. Now I've got to get back to these noodles. What was I making rice? Hmm. Anyway, the customers are waiting. Until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, Ladle Drop! Oh. How many of you got tired of waiting just then? It's such a hard thing to do. Whether it's waiting on Christmas or our birthdays or someone to come pick us up, waiting is hard because we're not very patient. Patience is an important fruit of the Spirit. We must learn to exercise patience with God and with people. But how do you do it? What does it look like if you have patience on display in your life? When we're impatient with others, it's very easy for them to make us angry. Think about it. What happens when your little brother or your little sister is taking a long time in the bathroom? You wait for a few seconds and then you get angry and you start beating on the door and yelling at them to hurry up. That's not displaying patience, is it? In order to display the fruit of patience in your life, you must be slow to become angry. If we're going to display the fruit of patience in our lives, then we must learn to wait. Have you ever prayed for something and had to wait for it to happen? Has God ever promised you something, but then you had to wait for a long time for it to happen? Waiting on God is hard. It's hard for us and it was hard for Joseph. God was working to put all this together the whole time Joseph was waiting. Did Joseph know this? No, as far as he knew, he'd be in prison forever. But Joseph did something that we need to do too. Trust, he trusted God. That's how you learn to wait. Joseph trusted God to come through. You can trust God too. You can trust God's timing. When you trust God, guess what? Trust produces patience. It's true. When you trust God, it produces patience in your life. You don't get impatience because you know that God is in control and you can trust him. The opposite is also true though. If you are impatient, that shows a lack of trust in God. God loves you and he'll help you with your lack of trust and impatience. All you have to do is ask him to take control. He will help you produce the fruit of patience in your life if you trust him and you hand it over to him. Remember the situation we saw in the video earlier? Well, let's see what it would have looked like if the young man truly had the fruit of patience in his life. Are you excited for tomorrow, Kyle? Yeah, Dad. Tomorrow is Christmas, and I can't wait. Well, you've got to wait till tomorrow morning to check on the presents, okay, champ? It's okay, Dad. I can exercise patience and wait until morning. That's what I'm talking about. Patience is a wonderful thing. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. That's true. Now close your eyes and go to sleep.
Rise and shine, champ. It's Christmas morning. Oh, awesome. And to reward you for your patience all night, I thought I'd surprise you with an early present before breakfast. Oh, awesome. It's time to rewind and I only have three questions so it's going to be really, really simple. Got yourselves ready listening right now? So according to our lesson today, what did you learn? Did you learn to wait on God? Did you learn to count on God? Or did you learn to lean on God? The answer is learn to wait on God. Guys, we can count on him. We can count that he's going to come through for us and we can lean on him for sure. But today's lesson told us to wait on him. Second question, according to our lesson today, what was it? Trust produces faith or trust produces patience or trust produces more trust? The answer is trust produces patience. Here we go. Where was our power verse found? Was it found in Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2, Psalm chapter 27 verse 14, or was it Matthew 14 verse 7? Which one? The answer is Psalm 27 verse 14. Remember it said, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. And they repeated it, wait patiently for the Lord. So we need to wait on God. Remember, give everything to him, ask him to help and trust that he will come through. Wait. Actually, I can't wait till God answers everybody's prayers about this COVID-19 situation and wait to see it over and wait to see a vaccine and wait to see you guys. Are you waiting too? Let's all pray together and wait for God to do great things. Kids, I want to encourage you to trust God. Sometimes things don't go to plan. Sometimes things don't go to our timing. But we need to give our problems, our concerns, our desires to God and trust him. And when we trust him, patience will grow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we all have different things that we're waiting for. And I ask for each person who's listening today that they learn to trust you, that they will give you their problems and they'll wait for you to help them in your time. We know you have a good plan for each of us and we pray that we'll be patient enough to wait for that plan to come to pass. Thank you that you are in control. And everybody said, Amen. You know, I've realised I don't need this mask on when I'm at home. I just need it when I go out amongst other people to keep them safe. But... Here's something that you should think about. How are you enjoying this time of isolation? What would you rather? Would you rather be at school, doing your schoolwork with your friends? Yes? Or would you rather be at home, in isolation? Maybe big thumbs down? Well, I know some people, they're actually stuck at home through no choice of their own because they're discriminated against because they're Christians. And that's who we support through Open Doors. We are supporting people who are persecuted just because they're Christians. They might not be able to get out and about. They might not be able to do their shopping. They might not be able to go to school. They might miss out on an education. They might miss out on spending time with their friends at school. So if you have got an offering for that, please, 
save it up for when we're together again. Or talk to your parents about making a donation online so that we can support Open Doors. Now, we have been doing our coconut challenge and I know some of you have already cracked a coconut. I know I did. Mine came out whole and left an empty shell. And you guys need to do the coconut challenge too. We've run out of coconuts to give away, but you can still buy one from Coles or Woolworths. Get your mum or dad to buy a coconut and get it filmed and get it sent in. And you guys who we gave a coconut to, hurry up and film it and send it in. You've got to send it to marie at unihillchurch.com.au. Now, look at the screen. We've got someone who's featured this week cracking a coconut. Ready? Hi, it, I'm going to smash a Just smash it! <laughs> Jump! It's <laughs> <laughs> just like a basketball. Oh, uh, stop. Ah! Oh. This I'm is like two shots. Hold it. Still. Oh Well, hoot, hoot, it turned out. Have a look, it's all done. I didn't change pans, I put it in, in the pan that I had it in. I set it going, 45 minutes later, it came out, I turned it out, and it's beautiful. Now all I have to do is ice it. Just a bit of cracking in there, I can hide that. I just simply sprinkle it with icing sugar. Sometimes I mix icing sugar with a bit of orange juice and a bit of butter, and it makes it really nice and creamy. You do what you want to do and enjoy it. We want to see how your cakes turned out. Make sure you give it a go. The recipe is posted at the end of our video today and also it will be on our Facebook page. So get your journals out, write the recipe down, go on, create, enjoy. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Control.